Strategy games are really interesting to me and like four other people at any given moment. But you can't sit there and tell me that they're not cool. It's like chess with guns. So I set out to make one. And it looked like this initially. That's not a strategy game. It looks like this now. That is a strategy game. So how, dear viewer, did I get from this, not a strategy game, to this, a strategy game? That's the, that's the video. That's the whole point of the video. That's why you're here. That's you. That's why you clicked on the, roll the title, roll the title, roll. If I sound a little more gravelly or nasally than I usually do, I say usually as though I have more than 11 videos over the last three years. Ugh. Well, that's because I am quite ill, and I could have waited to make this video until I was done being sick, but my being sick usually takes in a decent amount of time, and I said like a month and a half ago that I would have this video out in like three weeks. Uh, <laughs> I really have to stop giving you guys the deadlines I give myself for my projects because I never hit them. But I'm here now, and the video's rolling, so let's start at the beginning, which is where you start things. This is going so well, turning an RTS that I made in Scratch, which I mentioned in the last video, into a Unity game. This takes me into Vector Flow Fields. If that term is unfamiliar to you, and it damn well should be, because that means that one of you have mixed my, like, 500 subscribers is also making an RTS that uses Vector Flow Fields, which would be a... I don't know of a huge coincidence because, you know, YouTube it, the space is kind of specialized, so it makes sense that people who are also indie game developers would find my channel. But also, you're probably spying on me. Here to discuss vector flow fields, let me introduce you to a format I call Mini Devlog. Mini Devlog. As you can see from my robe and glasses and fireplace and mostly empty bottle of whiskey that this is dignified and refined. YouTube really likes to just chop the legs off of my videos. They do very well for a channel my size in the first two to three days and then they flatline like your grandmother. Rest her soul. The issue I believe is that I just upload inconsistently enough so YouTube doesn't have any reason to really promote my content because they can only play so many ads on one individual video and YouTube makes its money off of ads that they want you to upload frequent content. That's why they push the short slop so much. So in mini devlogs, I'm going to talk specifically about one component of the upcoming bigger video like you're watching right now and I'll release a couple mini devlogs before each big video. It should help keep me incentivized to keep working on it because I don't like making videos as much as I like making games. But basically it just means you'll get more content and YouTube might not squeeze the life out of my video. Anyway, flow fields. Flow fields are, in theory, very simple. Essentially, you split the world that you want to navigate through into a big grid, and then you make a flow field for each cell of the grid. To make a flow field, you start at the point that you're making it for in this grid. This is the point that when a AI that you're making wants to go to a specific spot, it'll get the flow field for that point. And then for the surrounding points, you go round robin. There's a lot of different ways to do this part, but essentially you say, hey, if you're not already pointing somewhere else, point to me. And then they all do that, and then that process is repeated for each of these tiles. So this top right tile will grab this and say, hey, point to me point to me. This corner one will grab the two remaining here because they have <clears throat> dignified because they have a specific radius, my mobile game, and the process repeats until every point on the grid has a direction. This so that you can start from anywhere on this map and all you need to do to get from point A to point B is check the tile you're on, go to the one it's pointing to, and follow that until you're back at the location. For distances and difficulty traveling and stuff like that, you can throw in modifiers, typically called a path cost, to determine how easy or difficult it is to go along a specific trail. And that's pretty much all a flow field has to it. Of course, as with all things in coding and with all algorithms like this, you can make it substantially more complicated, but this really is not that hard. So when I tell you that this took me like three months of my life that I will never get back, I'm serious, and I do not say that proudly. 
The issue really I think that I had is that I was trying to make a three-dimensional flow field instead of just a two-dimensional flow field, which makes it substantially more complicated because now you need to have an entire other dimension to your array that sorts all of these tiles, and you need to have logic with between going up and down, which really, really boiled down to like eight lines of code more than the two-dimensional one. Eight lines of code, probably 80 hours of trying to get to work. I must have ripped the entire thing apart and put it back together like four times. But it works. That's what this picture is. The picture I showed you at the beginning, that's, that's square one. That's step one. I can't make the strategy part or the game part of the strategy game that you're here to see until I made this and this <laughs> this was step one and it took me like three months I am dead on the inside that really was classy good job me obviously this is a different day than I started this video on I'm no longer sick the fact that I'm wearing the same shirt is kind of the opposite of a continuity error but it's a continuity error that, of course, functioning off the presupposition that videos like this, which are not a skit or not supposed to take place in real time, in other words, videos that essentially disable your suspension of reality, have continuity at all, because this is not a, a A to B kind of thing, although it is, because this is the creation of the game. This is like the distance, the start to finish. That's the whole point of the flow field thing. I just rambled about it being the... Flow fields, done. Ch -ch Checked off the list. At this point, I was thrilled and dying to actually make this a game game instead of just a tech demo. So my next step was to take these little beans and just have them move around the flow field based on the areas that they're currently on, like I explained in the flow field section. Just grab the flow field for the point you want to go to, find the point that you're currently on, and chain together the next position information that each tile has until you reach the point. Then just move along that at set speed, and boom, you have reasonable looking movement. And I'm not going to mention it again over the rest of this development cycle, but I'd like to let you know that I have now rewritten most of that system like two times since then, and there's no visible difference on the product side end, but it makes a world of difference for the actual like functioning, reliability, gameplay, not gameplay, uh, stability end. So I'm going a little insane what's the definition of manic because i feel like manic is my my mannerism right now society i should just hang up the towel this is i can't do this i'm not I, just, I can't make videos what am i what am i saying they move check at this point i had movement and i had them snapping to like little graphics tiles and more importantly in a big headache that i really i can't make interesting on a video side but what took me like three weeks was saving and loading everything so just know that that functions a concept i'd like to have for this game is that you build your deck much like you did in the game inscription where when you're moving around a larger campaign map or managing them your units are stored in cards although for this game they're going to be called tiles because that works a little better with the tile map system i've got going but essentially each tile is a unit they start out as simple no name lowest level generic draw from the deck cards during gameplay, but if they do well enough during that game, as they do in XCOM and games like that, you can promote them at the end of a match, provided they're still alive, and then use those units as well as the generic deck in later missions. And then if that unit dies, if a special unit dies, they are gone. They're removed from your deck because permadeath is fun. Again, to me and like four other people at any given time. From this point onward, I did the really cool developer mistake of hard coding things that I knew, I knew I'd later have to make it more modular, but I just wanted to make it a game, you know, I was like, ooh, let's get a game going, yay! No, not yay. Over the course of like the month following me having successful moving around, I made it so that you could well, that there were enemies in the first place and that you could shoot them, that you can move around, that there are structures, that there are cards that you can draw and play because that's the whole idea. But after a month of cobbling all those specific things together, you have what looks like a game, slight snag, most of the logic is taking place in like 1200 lines of a game manager script that I made and it's super super hard-coded, which is not what I want. I want this to be a modular game, kind of like the uh, StarCraft Custom Managers 
thing that you have where you can set up a specific game, set up how many players you want in, how many AI, stuff like that. And that's outside of the campaign, which was I originally coding this for. It would work in a campaign setting, but not for a multiplayer or co-op or PvP or anything like that. So at the end of it all, I had movement, shooting, even abilities a little bit, but I just I couldn't use any of it. And I knew the further and further I went along this path, the further, no, the more of it that I would just have to rip up when I wanted to fix it. So the next step is to reach into the intestines, metaphorical intestines, of my game, which is spaghetti code, so it's metaphorical spaghetti intestines, and just rip them out the front, and then replace them with these bright, shiny new intestines that I made from scratch, because I know your intestines better than you do. However, that will be in the next video, because my Premiere Pro subscription is running out tomorrow, and I have to get this video made. Also, I'd like to make a mini devlog about the ability system I made, because it's actually very cool. So so stay tuned, it won't be 10 weeks, because this video took me about 10 weeks. However, I cannot guarantee you any specific time frame from in within those 10 weeks, because I'm bad at giving you time frames. If you would like to play the game in its current state, and I don't mean this state, I mean the state that it is in my own development cycle, that is available on my itch page, which I will leave linked in the description. Once this gets to a point where I can actually call it a game and has a lot more features than it does right now, which I'm kind of getting close to, I plan on releasing this on Steam. So, say, so, see, so, uh, so, so stay tuned for that. That stutter was not like a bit or anything. That was genuine. That was genuine. Thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe, and go away now.